Hey, this is Clark, V12ICPack.com. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're not going to talk about ignition systems. We're going to talk about a shifter. This is not my car. This is a car that got shipped up to me from Los Angeles, 400 miles away. Uh, the guy said he couldn't get anybody to figure his car out. And uh, I told him as long as it was running, it was all about engine misfire issues. Turned out to be his bad voltage transformer. Um, and, so, and a couple of little things. But anyway, uh, one of the conditions of me taking the car was I had to be able to drive it. And he goes, oh, yeah, it runs. So it arrived on a flatbed with a dead battery. And the tow truck driver had a hard time getting it out of park. Uh, so that kind of... Uh, it was just a temporary situation until I was done driving it and uh, had it all ready to go here and it, it was stuck in park and I couldn't shift it. So it's like, okay, what's going on? So I thought what I'd do is make a quick little video. I, there's videos here on YouTube um, about the shifter mechanism, but none of them explain how the thing works. So that's what this is about. This isn't so much how to get it out. Uh, this is a question of how does this thing work so that if you've got issues, maybe you can come about the troubleshooting process a little more intelligently rather than what I did was to listen to a YouTube video go by a part and that wasn't the issue. So in order to get into this thing, you've got to strip away the outer layers. Um, your dash pieces, both of these bezels are just snap fit, so they're going to come off. The back of the console, these were gone, but there's two screws, whatever kind of head was on them, have to come out. You've got connectors that have to be unplugged and a coax cable that's got to be unscrewed in order to get the back end of this thing to lift. You've got to pitch it way up in order to clear the tabs, the wings, whatever you want to call them, on the console that are tucked underneath here. So when you tip it up, you can get this thing out of the way. Um, once you've got that out of the way, you got a couple screws up here holding some stuff down as well. There's basically three they're uh, five millimeter Allen head screws here, here, and one up in the front, and that's going to loosen the entire shift mechanism. You've got two plugs, and one of these, I just put some RTV over it. The, the wire was bare. Somebody's been working on this car, which probably explains it, why it has the issues that it has. Um, you've got this cable here that's also going to be in the front, and there's two ways to get this thing out. The easiest way, the first go around, is probably just a real tiny screwdriver and pop up these two tabs and the cable will come out of this plastic housing. This housing will remain in the gear shifter. The other way to do it is you can see you've got two tabs here and here, these little tabs right there. So you can rotate these a certain way and they'll line up and you can pull it out. Now with this thing out, getting it out, the last piece is kind of a, a nuisance as well because you can't see what's going on. This pin, this is the bottom of your gear shift lever right here. So when you move this, this is going to move. This is going through, this is a shift arm going right to the transmission. I've got an X-Acto handle knife blade going through there just so it doesn't fall down. Um, my hand isn't going to fit through that slot very far if I've got to reach to go find this thing. Um, you've got this cutout on this arm and it's going to go around the shifter so you can't get this thing out it's actually sitting in there so you can see this arm here is in this groove okay so trying to get this thing out it's gonna bang up against this side of the arm so if you twist this back far enough you'll clear that and then you can get this thing out you really don't need to mess with a clip it looks like this clip has to come off and it doesn't so once you've got this out in hand there's several screws on the bottom that hold this outer shell to the inner guts, and you got this some other screws that hold this plastic plate on. But if we take this off, okay, I think three screws held that on. You've got another inner shield here. I think there's rivets. These were gone by the time I got to this thing. Um, somebody's clearly been in this. So... You take out the machine screws, they're tiny little three and a half millimeter screws that hold that on. But you take those off, get this thing out, and that kind of reveals the guts, uh, the working scenario of the shifter. So, theory of operation. 
trying to get my mental sequence right. When you watch the YouTube videos, they're going to tell you that this piece is broken and that's why you're stuck in park. You can tell this piece is not broken. <laughs> but uh, and I, it has now been replaced with a with a nice stout aluminum part. So let me uh, let me do this. Let me put this plug this thing in so that we're alive. So right now this thing is it's in park. Okay, I can't move it, and that's what you want. And one of the other issues I had was the gear shifter would just slide around without even having to put the brake on. So if I turn. We're not going to start the car. We turn the key to on, and watch what happens when I depress the brake pedal. Okay? So, depressing the brake pedal activates this solenoid. When the solenoid is activated, it lifts up on our original OEM plastic arm, which can break, and that would probably break right there. And that's why, I'll show you in a second here, why this thing wouldn't shift after that. So, brake pedal off. So, once, once you depress the brake pedal, it lifts this. Let me let me get it out of park. And when you lift it, not much room here. When this lifts, when this arm lifts up, it's hitting this little pin. And that little pin is actually on this other arm back here. That other arm, we have to unplug now. You've got rotation of a plate. So this plate, this entire plate, is part of the shift lever mechanism. When it goes to park, you can tell we got a thin little thin little spring here. It was putting some pressure on this arm, which is this guy here. It's all part of the same mechanism. When you go to park, you can see something starting to turn here in the background, and it's it's now locked in. We've got basically a flat edge on this piece that's hitting this flat edge, and we're now in park. We can't we can't move it out. If I were plugged in, brake pedal, this arm's going to lift from the solenoid. That solenoid lifted moves this guy here. So when I lift that, you can see that arm moves. So when that moves, you can see this part right back here. Watch this guy right there. That's attached to our shift linkage, shift shifter, and that's going to go past now our, our stop. It's in park. That little spring is going to push that bar in, and now we're stuck in park. Activate everything. Cam pushes the pin. And now you can shift. Okay, so that's that's theory of operation of getting it out of park. So what had happened to this particular mechanism from the people that were beating on the shifter, trying to get it to shift, they mushroomed out the plate where it wants to line up on the stop mechanism. So this plate right here was all mushroomed out, so it was now a rounded edge. So putting it on the stop, it had a nice round edge to it, and it would just keep <laughs> keep shifting. So that was the particular issue with this. Now this little rubber boot here, if I pull this down, I can give a little reveal. What's interesting is that this black box, yet another black box, this is actually uh, got firmware in here. There's probably an EEPROM, and this thing is coated to the vent of the car, so that if somebody um, thought there was something wrong with this box and you changed it, you're not going to, the car is not going to start, it's not going to shift, it's not going to do anything because um, it's not keyed correctly VIN-wise for a matching VIN. You can see there's a pin here and there's one on the other side. So when I move this mechanism, you can see the pin rotating because it's all part of the shifter shaft, but it is moving a plastic housing in here. And that plastic housing has probably got little contacts which is telling the car, or at least the dash, what gear you're in. And it's also communicating to the ECU saying this part is programmed to the ECU, so you got a legal part, legal car, nobody's trying to steal it. Okay, so I think this guy's problem was this wire was really loose. Um, 
it wasn't out, but it wasn't making contact. And I think that's the reason this thing would get stuck in park is because with a loose connection here, solenoid wouldn't react. So it wouldn't lift the locking pin. So banging on this thing, they eventually mushroomed that out so that you could at least get the shifter to go through. Now the other thing you can see here, you've got a spring-loaded catch me mechanism. And this is not a roller, but it's a round roller that doesn't roll. But when you go to drive, that locks in. So you've got some pressure pushing up on it, and that gives the shifter a nice locked-in feeling. And at the same time, the bottom of the shifter continues down here, and it's going to go right in between this little micro switch. Okay, so when you go to downshift, move the shifter to the left, it moves this micro switch to the right. So it's got contactors in there, and that is what is sending the signal for the transmission to upshift, downshift if you're doing things manually. And his car was not manually shifting properly, and I did make a slight adjustment to this. So hopefully I've uh, picked that up so that it, it will work better. And then the other piece with this rotating cam is that when you do go to park, this is going to make contact. This roller is going to make contact on there. It's going to push this up against where that cable was. And right now, the key, I can't take the key out. It's stuck in. I can turn it, but I can't get the key out. This is a mechanical cable, so if you ever get this situation where you can't get the key out, depressing this button is releasing, you can hear it, you can hear it click, and then you get the key out, okay, and that will remain in a retracted position. As soon as I turn the key on, this will pop out, really not going anywhere but it will allow it to come out once the car comes out of park and this plate will now retract out of the way. So that's how your shifter works. So if you're stuck in park, you can't get it open, you're going to have to get this thing out and see, get that cover off and see if your plastic part here is broken. Okay, and that's this guy. If you get a new part, it'll be aluminum, it'll come with a spring. I had to put uh, super glue gel on the spring to hold it in the arm. You can see it's way down here, but there's no way <laughs> to get the little nub on the shifter in a little hole here and without that spring bouncing all over the place, and it just doesn't happen. So super gluing that onto that allows you to be able to get that thing in there. To get this arm out, there is a dowel pin right here, and you'll have to come in with something small, knock that dowel pin out the other side, get this down in like the drive position and then you'll be able, with that pin out, you'll be able to lift this arm up, contort it, twist it a certain way, and get this over that pin. So again, solenoids activated. This arm is pushing on that pin. That pin now allows the stop mechanism to withdraw so that the gear shift mechanism can turn. So there's your theory of operation on the shift lever. And uh, unfortunately with this car, <laughs> there is a recall on the instrument cluster and this thing died on me while I was test driving it. It went half dark and about two minutes later the entire thing went dark. Uh, I've taken it apart. I can't, I didn't, I couldn't really. It's one of these things without being familiar with stuff, you can just go down a, a rat hole. Rabbit hole, but there's two printed circuit boards in here. There's a couple things I uh, touched up with solder that didn't look that good. Um, so I don't know if this is going to work when I put it back in there or not. If not, I've used Module Masters out of Idaho. Uh, there's a recall on these things. It was open for 10 years from like 2002 or three, So it was good till 2012 or 13, something like that. Um, but anyway, Module Masters up in Idaho, they do a good job. They used to be $150 uh, to go through these things, fix them, and send them back. So... That, that one may be headed there if it doesn't work after I fool around with it. And if you're curious how these come out, you can get little keys uh, on eBay. They're like six bucks. But they just slide in here and here, and they lock into position, and you can just pull the thing out and unplug it. So simple to do if you've got to get your instrument cluster out. Okay, and of course, if you've got any issues with your ignition system not firing properly, coil packs, voltage transformer... Uh, I can certainly help you out. 
with uh, rebuilding and replacing those items. Okay, thanks for watching.